Hey everyone, I'm down from the mountain, but I wanted to share a photo video, photo show of what it's like to climb to the summit of Kilimanjaro. I'm doing this because I've had this playlist up for a few years now and I get a lot of questions or comments about, wait, why didn't you do a video of the summit? And I said, well, because I didn't think about it. I was doing climate zones and I did all the climate zones, so I was done. <laughs> So uh, by, by popular request, I'm going to go through a few shots here for you to talk about the experience of climbing to the summit of Kilimanjaro. And I dressed up like I was on the mountain because it's fitting with the rest of the, uh, the, the videos in this playlist. Anyway, I wanted to comment really quickly on the experience of climbing, uh, experience of climbing the mountain and how it's really amazing to get up so early in the morning and climb up the mountain and get these incredible views and uh, brings a lot of joy to the climber uh, to, to be able to, to, to see those views. So um, Kilimanjaro, of course, if you climb um, any of the standard routes is more of a trekking peak, but still it's just amazing to be up there early and, and, and have these vast horizons and be able to see sunrise and, and uh, all of the even if it's the clouds, it's pretty amazing to be able to see that far. The other thing I wanted to really focus on uh, for this slightly longer video, it's going to be maybe a 10 minute video in this playlist of very short videos, is to talk about the glacial recession that I've observed on top of the mountain. So the video that was just before this one in the playlist focused on the Furt Wangler Glacier as I walked between two chunks of ice and talked about how the area where I was walking was once covered by ice. Uh, and I wanted to show you some of my experience of that. Now, this is not a very scientific presentation because I was not careful to have the same camera in the same position in the same uh, orientation every time. But you can see pretty clearly the changes that have happened to this piece of ice over the years. This is the second trip I took to Kilimanjaro in 2003. You can see the glacier there uh, behind the group I was uh, leading. Uh, same, same trip, we just had everyone walk up next to the glacier and just check it out. And people broke off uh, uh, icicles and sort of played with them. It was, it was really neat to be able to walk along the glacier. And you can see here, it's, it's pretty tall. I mean, if these people are uh, six feet tall for the tallest people, you're looking at, I don't know, um, at least 40 or 50 feet, I'd, I'd guess, right? By 2005, just two years later, there was this major dent uh, that had been melted out of the center of the glacier. You can see it's sort of getting a lot lower there. And there's some people there in the foreground. And this is only about maybe 15 feet high now compared to the other parts. So part of the glacier had a little bit of a weakness or something in it, maybe a little bit of, uh, of uh, ash or debris got blown on top of it and it's melted faster. I don't know what caused this to start weakening, but as soon as that weakening it accelerated and uh, melted out in this big divot here, you can see by 2005, same glacier in 2005, just from higher up on the mountain on the way to the summit. And so you can see uh, the glacier was pretty intact. That divot was off to the right hand side of this photo. So you don't see it here. Uh, but then 2007, when I was there again, you can see that that divot then had melted out almost completely to the ground. There's little pieces of ice there. There's a little chunk of ice there. There's a little layer here where it hasn't melted away all the way, but pretty, pretty rapid deterioration. A year later, 2008, you can see those pieces of ice that were on the ground there in between are completely gone. That little shelf that was there is mostly melted away. And so now the glacier is no longer one single large mass of ice, it's two even smaller masses of ice. And this one in particular is relatively small. It is not a whole lot of mass there compared to its surface area. So if you think about how much surface there is to melt on the outside compared to how much volume of ice there is, it's not a very large body of ice at all. The northern glaciers here, by the way, these are called the northern ice fields. Uh, much larger in mass, but also receding very rapidly too. 2017, um, I was there in 2012 and I don't have any good shots looking down um, onto the glacier. So I, I got up to a point where I could have looked down. Uh, we, we climbed the mountain from a different side, so I didn't walk past it that time, but 
um, I, I don't have any good photos. I'll have to ask for some uh, if, I, if I get a chance to, to, from someone in my party from, from that, that climb. Um, by 2017, when you, the, the video you just watched was taken in the, the, play, the video in the playlist before this one uh, was taken, you can see that that chunk of ice that was cut off is now gone to almost nothing. I would imagine by now it is gone. By 2021, it's completely melted away. And you can see also that the total volume of this glacier is much lower in terms of its depth. It's not nearly as thick as it once was. So there you can see how thick it was. And here you can see it's really starting to diminish in its total height as well. I want to take a brief detour with y'all here. Talk, talk about the, the geology of Kilimanjaro. Um, Kilimanjaro, of course, is a massive volcano. Uh, and it's that's one of the reasons it's, it's it stands alone by sort of off by itself as volcanoes tend to do that they're not always parts of mountain ranges they can just form in the middle of an otherwise um, relatively uh, low topography area uh, and so that's the case for Kilimanjaro Kilimanjaro when you climb it you come up either on this side or as we did for for this trip over on this side right here and then you, for, for our route, we come over past the Wangler Glacier, which is where those photos were taken. And then you zigzag up this steep scree field to get right here to Uhuru Peak. And Uhuru Peak is the highest point along the rim of the large crater that makes the top of Kilimanjaro. But in the middle of that large crater area, so there's this big flat area you can see where that, those ice fields are, for example. Um, in the in the middle of that crater, there's another cone, and then a depression into another crater, and then a third little depression into a, what's called the ash pit in the middle. So for this little detour, we're going to climb this th feature in the middle called the Roish Crater, and we're hiking up there. You can see the edge of the larger crater over here, the crater rim there that makes up Uhuru Peak and the highest point of Kilimanjaro. And I'm just going to give us a little 360 tour really quick here, if I can. This file is big enough, it's a little laggy. I'm sorry if it's... Have I lagged it out? There we go. Now it's working. So there's more in this the stitching on this um, panorama isn't working quite as well as it could but you get the idea there's part of the rest of the crater rim you can see the northern ice fields there in the distance there's my buddy and our tanzanian guides that helped us get up there and now this is the roish crater we're looking into and then this feature they call the ash pit you can walk down into the Roish Crater. You can approach the edge of the ash pit. I wouldn't get too close. It's pretty <laughs> steep and be easy to fall in. Uh, and then finish the 360. There's the true summit of Kilimanjaro again. So that was a fun trip for me in 2017. I made this detour. I'd always sort of wanted to go and do it, never had the opportunity. And on this 2017 trip, I we had uh, a very small team and we were fit and had the time in in the schedule to, to be able to run over on the detour to this. And it's only 400 feet higher than the edge of the um, crater rim where you come up um, onto the this, the, I guess it's almost like a plateau, but it's the edge of the crater um, proper before you go to the summit. and 400 vertical feet doesn't sound like much, but at 18,500 or so, which is where you come out um, onto the flat, it's really slow going. So you have to have a, an hour and a half basically to make it all the way over there. Anyway, I promised you some summit shots, so let's go. Let's go check it out. Here we go up um, past those little rapidly dying glacial remnants, and now we're on top. And I've, I've had the chance to celebrate a lot of summits with a lot of people, and it's really great. This is uh, before I was a geography uh, professor, I was a mountain guide, and I've had the opportunity to take people up mountains around the world, and Kilimanjaro has been a really popular destination. So uh, it really is fun being able to live vicariously through everyone's first experience, even though I might have been there before. Uh, I really enjoy it. So it's always big grins and celebrations and uh, 
super fun to be there. So people are pretty happy. Let's take a quick moment for some human geography. You might have noticed in these last two shots that the sign changed. So this was between 2008 and 2012. They took the old wooden sign out and they put up this yellow and uh, yellow and green thing. And it got coated with stickers, first of all, which is a little bit weird, so that's interesting. But also I think people hated it because when I went back in 2017, <laughs> uh, they'd replaced it they, with the old one. They, they took down the new modern sign and they put up the old uh, wooden um, old school sign. So um, it's interesting. Anyway, uh, the, um, the glaciers are receding really rapidly. This is looking at one of the glaciers on the uh, western side of the mountain. Um, they're, they're melting away from the top down, which is called beheading the glaciers because the area where the snow usually falls the most and feeds the glacier is the area where rapid melt is taking place. So the glaciers on Kilimanjaro um, are not really flowing downhill anymore and they're receding really rapidly. All right, that takes us uh, all the way to the summit and all the way down now to the cultivation zone. The next video in this playlist is taken in this zone right up here in the foothills of Kilimanjaro in what is sometimes called the cultivation zone or the agricultural zone. We're gonna visit a uh, coffee and banana uh, farm up on the slopes right up here someplace. Thanks so much for watching. And